Dit is alweer aflevering nummer 4 van de Bitcoin Journaal Special met deze keer Max Kaidoom. Hij is CEO en oprichter van Hodel Hodel. Dat is een peer-to-peer Bitcoin exchange. Een soort marktplaats voor bitcoins kun je zeggen. We spreken met hem over de ontwikkeling van dit soort marktplaatsen. De KYC procedures die steeds meer in zwang raken. En het Lightning netwerk. Veel luisterplezier en tot de volgende keer. Yeah, perhaps we can start, Max, with a short introduction of yourself and uh, with how did you enroll in the world of uh, Bitcoin and crypto? Yeah, so, um, like, my name is Max. I work with um, Hodl Hodl. Um, I usually, we usually prefer not to say, like, uh, I'm CEO or CTO. We don't have any positions, just, just a team member of Hodl Hodl. Mm-hmm. Um, so how I get into the space? Well, basically, uh, the funny thing I was for 10 years, I was a private banker. So I was working in the banks <laughs> Okay. and, uh, I've got introduced to Bitcoin by one of my former customers during one of our uh, annual meetings. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, he mentioned this, uh, phenomenon to me back in, I think it was 2013. He like showed me some wallets on his phone and he told me like, Hey Max, uh, there will be no reason for you to exist as a banker in like 10 years because Bitcoin, you know, solves the, the problem of middleman. And, uh, he was like very persistent and he was very like excited about this idea. So at that point I thought the guy's crazy, literally, you know, that, mm-hmm. that like, why why you need to use this magic internet money but i started yeah. to research that and um like i started to research so went to it was an end of 2013 uh, i went through 2014 then 2015 the same guy actually approached me uh, i already changed to went to another bank um for a higher position uh, and better conditions but um the same guy approached me and uh, he invited me to join his uh bitcoin company uh because okay. he started a bitcoin company so uh, because like my passion was always finance and it uh, and i thought like well fintech is definitely the place to be for me because everything is moving online and uh, I thought, well, Bitcoin is uh, basically the essence of the fintech. You have mm-hmm. digital money or digital assets. And it's like, uh, I think the Bitcoin is basically the highest. Uh, in terms of fintech, it's like the ideal solution because you have a strong IT and you have strong financial incentives and a strong economy within, which is crypto economy within uh, the Bitcoin. So um, I, I thought, well, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do this like uh, leap of fate. Uh, I'm going to jump out of the cliff and we'll see how I will uh, fly or how I will fail. Well, eventually uh, mm. still flying somehow. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. So, and, and, yeah, and that, that's my story. And uh, so you worked at this Bitcoin company and then at one point you decided to start uh, a Hodo yeah, well, um, yeah. I work at his Bitcoin company. I met there my uh, one of um, like our CTO. I met him there, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. we discussed this with him a uh, few things, and uh, started thinking uh, about Hodl Hodl because uh, at that point we understood that. Uh, that uh, like there is there was peer to peer exchange at that point. Well, obviously there was a lot local bitcoins already at that point, and um, we understood that they're like basically centralized exchange that only allows you to interact with another with another person through their own wallets, and basically there's no difference between them in terms of uh, holding the funds mm-hmm. as any other peer-to-peer exchange and we understood that at some point they will be forced to do KYCML which has obviously happened recently yeah. and uh, we also understood uh, we didn't like the UI UX uh, although now after all these years we understand that UI UX for peer-to-peer exchanges is uh, is extremely hard and difficult comparing to other centralized exchanges Okay. And the third thing we understood that, uh, you know, storing the funds uh, within your uh, like wallet, within your storages is uh, insecure. 
So mm-hmm. there's other options like multisig or non-custodial trading that mm-hmm. we do, um, which also help us to say that uh, is not to say, but it's a fact that we don't process uh, any funds at all. We don't touch your crypto. We don't touch your fiat. So um, mm-hmm. it's it's basically pure peer-to-peer trading that you have on on on, on hodl hodl comparing to like other web based solutions. Right, so right. yeah, that's that's was the reason, and I think the hodl hodl started in two thousand sixteen. Uh, took uh, one year for a team to release a testnet version mm-hmm. because there was uh, from the beginning there was a testnet. Then it took, I think, another. Well, less than a year, but uh, around eight months to release a beta, then six months to release uh, first uh, 1.0 1. version of Hodl Hodl. So Hodl Hodl is quite a young project, to be honest. It's it's it, it was fully launched uh, in February 2018, so it's literally less than two years old. All right, all right, all right. So so. We, we will dive into Hoddle Hoddle uh, in more detail. Uh, perhaps just a few questions about Bitcoin because, uh, yeah, I mean, Bitcoin is obviously, it's a technology, it's an open ledger, of course, and uh, then there's this, it's also like an investment class. And uh, if you look at the white paper, it's, it's in the end, it's also meant as a, a yeah, electronic peer-to-peer cash. So, uh, how do you see Bitcoin as a as a multi asset uh, concept, or perhaps you can elaborate on that? I see it as a phenomenon, to be honest. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. well, pe- people people tend to say that the uh, invention of Bitcoin is compared to invention of internet. I truly agree with that mm. uh, because the, I, I think that uh, if uh, if everything will go um, like not not by the book, uh, but if everything will go like it's uh, developing or uh, like uh, the evolution will go that way, then most probably we will see that Bitcoin is becoming like more and more important, uh, and it will become the 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 money, or or it will became the the ultimate. Uh, think in financial system. It will create actually a new financial system. So um, there's been like, uh, I, I do understand your question, what it is. So basically we can cut it off to what it is, a payment a mm. method or it's a digital asset. I think there's like the funny thing about Bitcoin, why, why it's so unique because it's actually a payment method and, and a digital asset at same at same point. You can... Yes. If you if you want to pay for something and you want to do a borderless payment, you don't want to have any intermediaries, you can use it as a payment method. If you want to store, uh, have a store of value, you know, digital asset that is hard to confiscate, uh, that there's no bank or central authority that can actually tell you, like, we're stopping your payments or where we are taking your money away that you can use it as a digital asset. I think it's both. Mm. And the nice thing about this technology is that actually suits many, many purposes for the people. Yeah. And basically in terms of in terms of my own opinion about about all that stuff is like for me, it's sometimes it's payment method and sometimes it's digital asset. Whatever. I don't have, I don't have any strong and particular opinion on, the, on that. I just understand that unique proposition of this point is that it can be a really good payment method, and at the same way, it can be a really good digital asset. So basically, it's like it's both, you know. Yeah. All right. So hey, you talked about a new, a new financial system. Um, I mean, yeah. it theoretically, can it replace the existing system? Of course, we have the the money supply and the central banks, and we 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 are used to bank accounts and uh, 
mobile <clears throat> mobile banking etc and and yeah. we have all these new technology companies like apple and google also have uh, also have uh, uh, payment uh, apps so <laughs> Do you see it as a replacement or just as as a as a uh, addition to existing um, payment methods or? Uh, well, um, as any evolution, the month uh, there 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 should be like longer time period to to like you know to mm -hmm. understand and to go from point A to point B. Like for example, if we take the internet, um, some of the some of the hypotheses that was made uh, in terms of uh, internet was was right. Like for example, that you will be able to sell online everything you want. Like you you can do that already. But um, you know, there's still a lot of supermarkets offline that you that people want to go and, and and shopping. But there's still a lot of uh, internet shops that. Uh, you know, people are, are used to that. And they're both, they're coexisting. Um, the problem is, however, that with, with the financial system, it's, it's in my opinion and in the opinion of many people, even those who oppose to Bitcoin, those who don't like it, they, they do accept and they do agree that the financial system is broken. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's, 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 it's on a constant printing of money. So if you will ask me the question whether there's a possibility of Bitcoin replacing current financial system of course and i think that bitcoin is closest to what we have at the moment to replace the current financial system although i would suggest that basically <laughs> there's tons of better solution than the current financial system like i think anything um can already replace the current financial system like you know there's you can compare it that, that you mentioned there's like already a lot of mobile banks. Yes. Like they're way more better than the conventional banks. You know, I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to do anything. I just download the app and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're already replacing the current. Uh, Bitcoin is much more deeper. There's much more deeper, like stronger incentives and Bitcoin is much more fundamental economical system than any other. Because like, even though mobile banks are really good, they still rely on the current financial system. If you cut off the fiat gateways to mobile banking, then it's like air to them. They won't be able to exist. No. Yeah. It's, yeah. Still, it's still based on the current financial system. Well, Bitcoin is something standalone. I think at some point we will coexist like we are already coexisting at the moment, but we see that in many countries, Bitcoin is already replacing the, like Venezuela, for example, people mm. are literally mm, like surviving in, in many cases uh, due to the fact that they can use Bitcoin. Yes, yes, correct. So and it's it's like it's a proper use case for 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 Bitcoin. You know, you can. Uh, I, I hate to say that, but these depressed countries as a, are testing ground that shows you a proper use case of Bitcoin, how it works, how it can work, how it can be applicable, and how good it is. So, so potentially, yeah, we also spoke to Jameson Lop, and he said, yeah, potentially there will there will be this ecosystem, this uh, this Bitcoin circular economy, actually, that there is yeah. no fiat money necessary to put in, uh, put on in this, in, in that system. Is that, is that a, is that a feasible uh, scenario, actually? I think, I think yes, because, you know, um, well, you can see, like, in, I recently read the little Bitcoin book, written by Alona Rano, Jimmy Song, and, and many other great people. Oh, yeah. And um, there was written, the, the funny thing that, like, the oldest fiat currency exists is basically British pound. And it was devaluated through the course of its life. Like, I think it was 97%, or, or I might be mm -hmm. wrong, maybe even more. So the average lifespan of the of the 
of the fiat currency was around 25 years, something like that, or, or a bit around 20 years. So I think, yeah, the fiat is really unstable. The the inflation is like, they, like we see it like, it's it's so corrupted and, and in many ways, mm. and you know it's it can be so it, it can be manipulated. You know, I I, I the funny thing I'm I'm really it's really funny for me to see the central bankers or the like big bankers they say that Bitcoin can be easily manipulated. Well, guys, your fiat system is manipulated through the whole course of the life, basically. It, it can be easy, way more easier manipulated. The question is between the amounts and the power that you have. Like in Bitcoin, you can go and manipulate with the market having like, I don't know, 10 or 20 million, maybe. Mm-hmm. In, in, uh, in financial system, you need more money to inflate something or to manipulate the price of something. But you can do that. Mm. And there's... And the supply of this money is way more bigger than in the Bitcoin ecosystem. We have limited supply here, 21 million. While in financial system, nobody literally knows how many, how many money are printed, uh, how many of them are existing at the moment. And you are like, we're living in this world, like hoping and relying on other people that, uh, well, they decided that th- this should be the the valuable thing you know euro or usd dollar or whatever mm. like it's still like the, the good thing about the bitcoin that there's a code code is low you know it's yeah. basically uh, the system was created with strong rules that cannot be changed well it can be changed but you need to have a consensus doubt that it will be reached like you know lifting 21 million limit to 42 for example yeah that is actually the question i wanted to ask i mean obviously i agree on on the 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 whole um yeah the quantitative easing of the current system etc um so and and, but obviously in the bitcoin community there's also some discussion if we can lift the fixed supply and uh and, and, and just, yeah, discover or, or research, um, yeah, what possibilities there are to, to have consensus on on a bigger supply. I'm, I'm not sure if this is really a dominant discussion, but sometimes this discussion flickers uh, on, on, the inter- on, on, on Twitter, for instance. But um, how do you see? I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's like a principle, of course, but... I think there's there's way more uh, opportunity that there will be like hard forks, for example, like parts of community will say, okay, mm-hmm. we still want to use some some like we already experienced in the past Bitcoin hard forks. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, we want to use uh, uh, we want to lift this limit to forty two million or I don't know sixty three million, whatever, mm, uh, and like. I still believe that majority of community won't agree with that. There will there won't be consensus, and uh, because why you need to do that is basically one of the points of the Bitcoin. You know, twenty one million, and can you you can divide this twenty one million in many many uh, fractions that you that you want. Yeah. Yeah, so, you have Satoshi's and that, yeah, that's 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 the reason you, you have like it's basically there is some finite number, but as far as I understand, it's it's still like really hard to reach it. So, and basically, I think that uh, there will be hard forks, but I doubt that people will uh, increase the limit because. Uh, Bitcoin also, the funny thing, it's already treated as uh, by many people who I'm spoke with and as a like kind of gold standard in crypto world, you know, everything is compared to Bitcoin. Price, prices yeah. are also made in Bitcoin. Like, you know, the tra- all the professional traders, they say like they don't already, they don't count their profits in fiat, they counted in Bitcoin. Like, and I invested one Bitcoin, I received back two Bitcoin. Um, they don't do that. I invested one Bitcoin, 
uh, 10,000 euros, I receive back 20,000 euros. Everything is like at some point people, I start using Bitcoin as a gold system or as yeah. a system of the value for other cryptos uh, that most probably will coexist with Bitcoin as well. Okay. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And and um, let's let's um, yeah let's move on to the Lightning Network because of course you were, yeah. uh, Hodo Hodo was also the organizer of the uh, Honey Badger in uh, Latvia in in the yeah. country and um, yeah one of the topics was obviously Lightning um, is is that I mean are you enthusiastic about this this experiment because it's still like an experiment but but um, it it seems yeah develops quite rapidly into this this all these payment channels and nodes. So, what's your opinion uh, on the current state? Well, I, I first of all I think Bitcoin is still experiment, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. Lightning is a basically experiment on experiment. So, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's yeah. like Inception, you know, it's it's a loop that you that's not infinite loop. Uh, but um, I think that uh, Lightning has, uh, in theory, Lightning has all the capabilities or opportunities to become uh, the mass adoption tool for Bitcoin. That that will definitely help Bitcoin reach mass adoption, like payments, you know, micro payments. Like you will be able to fulfill Roger Ver's dream, you know, buying coffee very fast very cheap with lightning <laughs> that, that's mm-hmm. what he's willing to do with big cash um i i still i i really like i believe in lightning network i mm-hmm. want to to it to succeed and actually hodl hodl also one of the things why we did um uh, did like developed our lightning functionality for Hodl Hodl because we believe in this system and because the, it's our investment in community and in mass adoption. And if you will check, like latest post of Hodl Hodl was that um, um, our lightning offer list uh, is increased, and we see that in many countries people are start using lightning, like in emerging markets. Uh, they were using Bitcoin or they wasn't using at all anything. And now they're using Lightning mostly because they use whole HODL. And they, in order to use like uh, it fast and cheap, for example, like in Venezuela, people are using a Lightning network on HODL HODL because for them, like transaction fee, which costs like 10 cents, 20 cents, sometimes it's, it's really like big money for them. And they are actually experimenting with lightning they're like researching it and due to the fact that you have this on hodl hodl many people start to learn lightning and many people in many other regions like developing regions then they start to understand lightning so so they see the value okay and how how does it work with uh with hodl hodl i mean Perhaps yeah, we have know. like we, yeah, we have two um, two versions of Hodo Hodo. One is like a standard version that we have is non-custodial on-chain, mm-hmm. uh, where you trade through our true multi-sig that we create for each separate trade. Like and and we also have a lightning mode where you trade through the channels that we open. Oh, okay. And so yeah, it's the it's, it's both people like parties meet, met on hodl hodl they engage in trades one cents uh bitcoin through the lightning in escrow that we create and another one cents fiat and basically the system is the same as for an on-chain so okay. that's fully private huh? i mean one of the, the the key elements characteristics of of lightning is that it is a private yeah yeah oh. yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so okay um yeah because that was one of the things and you also did the partnership with blue wallet eh? that's actually a lightning yeah we, we yeah we announced uh the partnership with blue wallet because we're we are about to release our api for exchange and um so in the coming months we will announce all other big partnerships that we have in the pipeline but blue wallet was a was one of the first so like in 2020 you will be able to trade peer-to-peer 
to Blue Wallet on HODL HODL. But Blue Wallet is also famous not for being just Lightning Network. They also have a option to like the standard like wallet. They have also two modes like Lightning mode and, and the on-chain mode. Yes. So you can use Blue Wallet as well as, as just a regular wallet like Samurai, for example, or Electrum. Okay, so I... And- Everybody can trade their Bitcoin via the blue wallet via your API. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it will be available because we're about to release API in like in one month from now. And then it will take some time to integrate this API to blue wallet and many other solutions that there are market at the moment. And then like some, some, at some time in 2020, you will be able to go to Blue Wallet to check the offer list and trade peer to peer with other peers. Uh, so you will be able to do this through Blue Wallet interface, but you will be actually trading on Holo Holo. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay, just one more question about the Lightning Network because it's yeah, obviously it's an open network like, like yeah, like Bitcoin, but also like the Tor network. And and how, how do you see these open private networks? Can it also be? Uh, can it also have some disadvantages like, um, like? Uh, uh, the obvious question is, of course, criminals or other groups that are sharing sharing data or um, how, how do you see that discussion? Like, the, Well, there's more- like, you know, it, there, there have been many researchers that uh, criminals mostly use traditional fiat systems. You know, they don't use Bitcoin that much. They actually don't use it. You, you know, they... they these people most probably prefer cash or yeah. banking because they understand that. And I doubt that there's somewhere like criminals that, that are sitting and researching like Bitcoin white papers on, or Lightning Network or they're waiting for Schnorr signatures and like, you know, whatever. So <laughs> um, I think it's simplicity and the predictability for them is a key. Uh, so... Uh, it's like it's like the same question like for example should we ban knives because someone was killed yesterday with a knife well how you will prefer you prepare your breakfast because like 99.9% of the people use it to cooking and like 000.1% or should we ban cars because you know people are like you know, they, unfortunately, they have like, uh, there's many and plenty car accidents in the world. So crazy. It's, 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 it's always, but like, yeah, with, yeah. with this uh, using financial vehicles uh, for criminal activities, like the biggest money launderers are traditional. We, we constantly hear, even like if we speak about Netherlands, you have these big banks who are, like mm-hmm. I think each year they're involved in some kind of money laundering cases and True. they pay fines and then it, uh, they pay 1 billion. Then they, <laughs> they caught up next year. They pay another 1 billion. They caught up like, so, so I was at one conference uh, a few months ago and there was a lady, she was, um, her, like, I didn't like her presentation in general, but the, the, she had a funny fact that, uh, about KYC ML system that it only prevents 3% of all the money laundering stuff happening in the world. So it's 97% ineffective system that actually more prevents of people, normal people using the banking system. That's why we have so many unbanked uh, people in the world rather than hunting down the people who are doing actual money laundering. So, you know, it's mm. like... I always like it's funny for me to see like bankers and and like and that they say you know like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is actually pseudonymous system. It's not like super confidential. You can basically, if you want, you can track uh, yeah. a, to yeah. certain extent. It's way more transparent than the banking system at the moment because you can go anyone go online if you have a. A transaction ID or you have a wallet you can basically check a lot of things which you cannot do with traditional money system yeah. and so yeah the the only reason why they say it's untransparent because they don't want to learn 
And because uh, government at the moment have a mon monopoly on seeing all people transaction or requesting the history of transaction, while like with Bitcoin, uh, anyone can do that. Okay, and of but of course with, with Bitcoin, it's obviously this on chain, eh? so everything is like visible, transparent. Obviously, with Lightning Network, you can imagine. I think you can say the same thing about Tor, like uh, you develop a technology and it's possible that, for instance, uh, pedophiles will use the network to share data. Yeah? So that's, that's just a, a, an ethical question in what way uh, you can, I mean, is there still some uh, control or, on these open networks that's just a, or is it just like the like a some kind of collateral damage uh if you yeah imply this, this yeah thing. it's like it's like with any as, as i mentioned with any tool there's always a collateral damage like you know mm. knives are inherently dangerous thing yeah but you know again or guns like gun control and all these issues that you have, like some people saying it prevents government to go into my house and, and like, you know, take my money or take me or like, you know, it prevents people to like occupy my private territory or something like that. Other people say it actually allows criminals to do the mass shooting stuff and all that stuff. So it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. For for me, it's like uh, it, it's also a dilemma. But uh, what I know for sure, for example, I've been speaking about this with also my friends. Uh, he mentioned that the the good thing about Bitcoin, it can be very confidential, and on the mm -hmm. other hand, it can be very transparent. So the system is flexible. Uh, yeah. I think we will with Lightning Network. There will be the same at some point. Lightning. A team will present some solutions where you can make lightning system way more uh, transparent because now for many exchanges why they didn't they don't implement the lightning network mm -hmm. because they don't have a transaction history like we know that many centralized exchanges they use chain analysis and all other solutions to actually double check whether the funds that they receive on their wallets mm -hmm whether these funds are good, that wasn't like steeled or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have that in lightning as far as I understand. But again, I'm not, I'm non technical person, so I might be wrong, but mm -hmm. as far as I understand, there's no such tech. So this prevents for many good centralized exchange actually, uh, uh, to implement lightning, at least for deposits and for withdrawing money from, from these exchanges. Okay. Like with Hodl, Hodl is a bit different because we don't touch base. We don't touch this. We don't store anything. We don't have any storages. Mm. So like we don't do this due diligence for, yeah. for, for our farms because it's like we just provide the technical tools and people trade. And that's it. While yeah. for centralized exchange, they, they work as money transmitter because they take your money they store it within their own like wallet, they process it, they, they send it back or they send to another person, whatever. So, yeah. yeah and that, I mean, obviously you announced uh, to open source the exchange. Um, and, and, and so, so, and in a way, what was the reason, there was a few reasons for it uh, to actually, it was also like a reaction on these KYC procedures, uh, I, I understood. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's mostly um, like we want to be more transparent and there is a lot of uh, businesses that operate within the Bitcoin space that actually open source and nothing bad about that, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so we, uh, we are also announced during the same announcement that we're going to create a platform for generic smart contracts that we have in our services like uh, mm -hmm. multi-sig that we use in HODL HODL and also multi-sig that we use in our prediction markets. We're going to create an API platform and everyone will, will be able to use this API to create their own exchange OTC desk. Okay. I don't know, uh, like 
you, you will be able to use this escrow tag to buy or sell real estate if you have like real estate agency or any luxury goods or like create a freelance markets and pay to freelancer. So there's many use cases I usually travel around when I speak at conferences, I speak and I present to people these use cases about multisig because I think we really believe within our team that multi-signature uh, multi-signature tech is underrated tech at the moment and not many people are companies and people are working on this because like okay. it's it's way more secure it's uh, it's like way more transparent and it's and like it's initially way more peer-to-peer -peer with what bitcoin is meant to be like be yeah. more decentralized and uh, so what we're going to do with hodl hodl we're going to like became less exchange operator and more software development company. That's what our initial goal. That that's why we are open sourcing. That's why we create we are creating our smart contract API platform so that anyone will be use um, will be able to use this this thing and uh, we will just uh, help people to provide with tools to use it so that these tools are secure, good, easy to use, and they're convenient enough. Okay, cool. Sounds, sounds uh, very interesting, uh, Mark. So, and, um, and, and is there, I mean, of course, you don't uh, hold any funds, huh? so actually yeah. you can, so you actually can argue that there's no KYC procedure uh, necessary, right? I mean, yeah. or, or and and how did uh, your how did the regulator yeah react on that on on we're not registered here okay. and a anywhere so we're registered in, in like more uh, in in way more freer jurisdiction as we believe but uh, we are also thinking of uh, actually at some point maybe getting rid of you know any jurisdiction at all and just like being uh, some kind of decentralized organization, something like that. So we yeah. have some like big plans, uh, how to tackle all the issues that the, 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 the like the push from, from other, other sites and other parts. So we have some things on our pip pipeline and roadmap. So very soon you will hear many, many interesting news, but I, I won't disclose that at the moment. Okay. Yeah, but okay. again, we do, we do, we like literally we don't process uh, anything. We don't touch money. We don't take it from point A to point B. So we are not a money transmitter. No. And like, we don't touch fiat, nor we touch the crypto. So basically, what's the problem? <laughs> we just provide the technical tools for people to trade. That's it. Then if, if you want to oblige platforms like HODL HODL to do uh, the KYC ML, then most probably the next step will be all the wallets will do that because, you know, they eventually also just providing the technical tools. They don't hold any funds within them. They just provide the technical tools. So that's... Yeah, you see in the market... The yeah, local bitcoins actually they they chose another route. Eh? So they implemented this KYC procedure, and now they got the license from the Finnish regulator. Uh, yeah, but uh, as I mentioned, they process funds. So when you trade, you need to deposit your money, bitcoins, yeah. to deposit your bitcoins within the wallet of local bitcoins, and you trade within their wallet. So they're holding your funds. So they're yeah. touching. We don't have opportunity to move your funds at all. Only in case of dispute, if there will occur a dispute, then we will be able to like uh, reach a consensus because HODL HODL holds only one key out of three. So even if we want, we will be able to move your funds um, like somewhere because we need to reach consensus. We don't, we don't touch that. And the system works like this. Okay, okay, okay. All right, and and um, so, how do you see? Because do you see any growth in the in the in the on the on the user side? I mean, how many users do, does uh, Hodl have on on a monthly basis or volume or? Um, 
we usually, again, we try to avoid sharing any data because, you know, less you share, less they know. But um, I can tell you that our markets that we are most active and people use Holo Holo are emerging markets. So Latin America, Eastern Europe, uh, Asia, Africa, uh, these countries are actually using cold follow. So uh, we truly believe that peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are, are suitable for emerging markets because in, like, in developing markets like Europe, US, we don't operate in US, by the way, but in traditional markets, um, they have a lot of sophisticated solutions how to buy and sell Bitcoin. So you don't need to present to them like peer-to-peer -peer markets at all. While in emerging markets, people are in need to, to have some kind of tools to buy and sell Bitcoin. And that's where peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are the perfect match. So, yeah, okay. in terms of, we see increase of, uh, like, usage of through emerging markets. Like, we see huge increase in Argentina, Venezuela, like okay. these markets. And... Uh, also, we see an increase in Russia. So we are trying to focus our, our attention and work towards these markets because like peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are really good solution for them because they don't have any regulation and they don't have like any solutions and usually like governments are against it to this or there's huge deflation and all that stuff. Inflation, I mean. And um, like, yeah, so, but in terms of amount of, of, of users, we have like more than 10,000 registered users. Cool. And like, we have solid offer list. And I don't know how many active people are using Holo Holo on, on a daily basis, but we see that the volumes are increasing. Uh, not comparable still to local Bitcoins because like obviously these guys are big mm. and we're quite young in the space. But yeah, we see really good traction and like Hodo Hodo is becoming more and more popular in, in many regions. So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, good work. I mean, uh, obviously you've you've um, yeah you've generated your own position in the space, and also with this uh, own event, uh, the Honey Badger, that's uh, yeah. obviously well known. So uh, I think that's a good uh, yeah a, a good opportunity uh, for you guys uh, for uh, extra exposure um, and credibility. And uh, yeah, perhaps we can end with a f uh, like a few questions. I mean what's what's for you personally like the end point for like when is when is bitcoin like uh done i mean what's the uh the end stage of of bitcoin or lightning or how do you see this this financial revolution uh end or when is it when is it uh, finished actually already <laughs> Well, I think that when there's like 90% or at least like 70% of people using mobile phones globally will have their Bitcoin wallet with them on their phone uh, and they will use Bitcoin to some extent, then I think uh, we, are, we are on a good track. So yeah, I think that, that that's, there's like... Um, also, a huge number, I think more than 70% people are unbanked at the moment and in the world. And there's like a uh, majority of them owns mobile phones. So th there's a perfect use case for Bitcoin to be used. And uh, so I think that, yeah, I don't have any particular metrics. Uh, somehow, I think at a point where we will reach the mass adoption, we all going to understand that, okay, it's mass adoption. We are here to stay and it's no longer experiment. It's solid. And it's something that you need to work with and you need to deal with. So I think, yes, but, um, okay. well, of course, obviously majority of the countries, uh, like uh, saying that, okay, you can now legally pay with Bitcoin anywhere. 
uh, or at least in, in, in many places in, in, in this country, like Japan did, for example. Yeah. So uh, as long as uh, big countries are doing this uh, publicly, like, I don't know, European countries or at least top, like top 10 countries in the world, like in terms of economic economy, then most probably we are somewhere there, or at least majority of the countries uh, in like top 50 economies, they're, they're accepting Bitcoin as a legal payment tender, then yeah, I so think in, we, we will be able to reach mass adoption. Yeah, so in the end, perhaps payments like or a unit of account, that, that's actually the, the, the killer app for Bitcoin in the end, or uh, as, as yeah. a... Uh, yeah, it might be, might be again, but it's it's like again for institutional players, it's still an investment vehicle. Yeah. For people, for many people, it's uh, asset to invest and to preserve your wealth. Um, and for majority of people, I think it will be yes, a payment method, and uh, like yeah, the the payment method definitely could be could be the 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 the, the best use case. At the moment, at least. Yeah, you mentioned it uh, briefly in the conversation. The the little Bitcoin book is it actually? Is that also the book you can recommend to our readers or listeners? Uh, <laughs> or is that I, a, uh, I, I, w- I I would recommend, although unfortunately Hodl Hodl wasn't mentioned then uh, there, and, and and I'm surprised why not. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised why not, but hopefully there will be a second edition and uh, this, these things will be fixed. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely recommend the book to, to read because it's easy to read. It's, it's really small. It's really little, as they say. Yeah. And uh, well, you, you like for onboarding new people in the industry or for, you know, explaining to people what is Bitcoin, I think it's one of the best... Um, educational materials that you can have there okay. because it's really it's, it's it's really good it's like um you will spend like two hours of reading and you will understand the, the core values the fundamentals of bitcoin what it is why it's it's need to be there and why it's good to to be involved in this movement yeah thank you very much and uh i will be yeah i uh, hope to see you next Year in Latvia, hopefully, uh, during cool. the Badger. <laughs> Funny Badger. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, cheers. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice day.